morning everyone and welcome to our service this morning. As you see this is the first one with me back at the helm. I've got Andy Vince with me this morning who's going to do the readings and uh, the responses for me. We have a new order of service because it is Advent which is why I've gone all mauve and blingy. That's the technical term mauve and blingy. Um, this is to celebrate the uh, coming of our Lord Jesus Christ into the world and today is Advent Sunday. So I have here my uh, Advent wreath or at least my nod to an Advent wreath. Uh, as you can imagine I'm now in the vicarage which is wonderful but if you could see what you can't see off the screen it's complete chaos of boxes around me. This is a little holy space that I've managed to carve out in the middle of the boxes. Uh, so I don't have a proper advent wreath. I had to quickly go and do a do-it-yourself job this morning, but we will light that in a moment as we remember the patriarchs this morning. And the only other thing to mention is, unfortunately, somewhere in my boxes is my wireless mouse. Normally I can do things from here quite sort of seamlessly, but unfortunately this morning I'm going to have to go backwards and forwards uh, to operate the laptop, so please bear with me. So as I said today, we celebrate the and uh, remember the patriarchs so those are the ancestors of our faith if you like they're the people who came before us people like abraham like moses those great uh, figures from the old testament and those are the people that we're remembering today so i'm going to light if we had an advent wreath this would be the first candle as you know we light one every week but for today i'm just going to light the one candle in memory of the patriarchs and there's a special prayer that we say so let us pray God of Abraham and Sarah and all the patriarchs of old you are our father too your love is revealed to us in Jesus Christ son of God and son of David help us in preparing to celebrate his birth to make our hearts ready for your Holy Spirit to make his home among us. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. Now we're going to begin with our first piece of music this morning. Our first hymn, we've got some lovely Advent hymns uh, now coming from St Martin in the Fields and the Royal School of Church Music. And the first one is Lo, He Comes with Clouds descending. So I'm just going to come over to my laptop to start the music for you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord have mercy. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Let's take a moment of quiet now to bring before God anything that is getting in the way of our relationship with him. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And a special collect for today. Almighty God, Give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, if we could have our first reading, please. Our first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 64, verses 1 to 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil. To make your name known to your adversaries. So that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard. We has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who worked for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were ang angry when we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We've all become like one who is unclean. 
and all righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf. Our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us, and you have delivered us into the hands of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not exceed, be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember our equalities forever. Now consider, we are your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 to 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as a testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift. As you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, he will, be, he will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, alleluia, alleluia, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the son of man in clouds of great power and glory. He will send out angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the four ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learns its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender, it puts forth leaves. You know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near. At the very gates. Truly, I tell you. This generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be aware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home, he puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands a doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, 
or at cockcrow or at dawn. Or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Andy. Heavenly Father, please open up to us your word this morning and may all that I say be what you would have me say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When I look back to Advent last year, I couldn't possibly have predicted what was going to happen in 2020. I don't think any of us could have. When I'm writing a new sermon, I often look back in my files to see what I wrote last time on a particular subject or a Bible reading. As you probably are aware, uh, we work in the church on a three year lectionary. So you do find that every three years, the same readings come back round again. I look back partly to remind myself of what struck me last time and partly to see if anything that I said then still resonates a year or a couple of years later. I ask myself, have I practiced what I preached back then? This time last year, I was actually preaching in Goldhanger because I was on placement. Although the gospel reading for last year was taken from a different gospel to this year, the basic theme was still the same, Jesus's second coming. In last year's sermon, I spoke about 2012. You may remember that was the year when, according to some ancient Mayan calendar, it was going to be the end of the world, or at least a major cataclysmic event. Uh, I think it was just supposed to be around the 21st of December that year. Of course, we know now that 21st of December 2012 came and went and nothing happened. When COVID-19 struck in 2020, for many of us, it seemed like the world was coming to an end. There's not been anything quite like it, I don't think, in living memory. No one saw it coming. Certainly no one ever predicted a national lockdown. If someone had told me this time last year that the whole country would be in lockdown, I think I would have laughed because, to be honest, I wouldn't have known how on earth we would implement such a thing apart from anything else. And I wouldn't have thought it would be possible for the country to continue with everybody staying at home, but for the most essential services. I thought it would come to the brink of total collapse. And yet, here we are, about to come out of a second lockdown. How life has changed. Some would argue that the country has come to the brink of total collapse. And yet, it's not all doom and gloom. At last, there seems to be some light at the end of the tunnel, some answer to prayer. We have permission to meet with loved ones over Christmas. We all wondered whether that would happen. We have a viable vaccine. There are improvements in testing and tracing and treating the virus. We have greater understanding of how it's transmitted and how it can be contained. God has given scientists the knowledge to enable them to make a vaccine and perhaps hopefully in time to find a cure, we must keep praying. Just as we didn't know that COVID was going to strike, we don't know when Jesus will return. Now, some churches spend a lot of time focusing on predicting the second coming. They find parallels in the Bible with events that are happening now and believe we are in the end times. Some Christians thought and probably still think that COVID was a punishment from God and a sign of the end of the world. Personally, I don't agree with that view. Years ago, I used to work with a lovely man who was a Christian minister, and he was absolutely convinced that everything that was happening in the world at that time could be found in the book of Revelation. What was happening at the time was the Iraq war. George W. Bush was president of the United States and Tony Blair was our prime minister. And as far as my colleague was concerned, it was the end times and at any moment Jesus would return. That was 2003. We're still waiting. 
The point is, no one knows when Jesus will return. Jesus himself didn't know. He told us only the Father knows. He warned against false predictions and false messiahs. He said, beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. What is far more important than worrying about when Jesus will return is worrying about whether we will be ready when he does. I wonder if you've heard this saying, if you were accused of being a Christian in a court of law, would there be enough evidence to convict you? When I first heard that, it really made me think. Today is the first day of Advent. Advent is the perfect time to pause and take stock of our relationship with God. As we prepare to celebrate Jesus's first coming as a helpless baby, it's good to ponder how we would react if he returned this Christmas. It's good to reflect on where we are on our Christian journey, to ask God to shine a light into our hearts and minds, to show us where we're doing well and where we're not doing so well. I'd like you to cast your mind back to when you were at school. Do you remember those times when the teacher went out of the classroom for a few moments and if your school was anything like mine, bedlam ensued? Were you one of the children who threw things at each other or got into a fight? Andy's grinning, so perhaps that tells us a lot about him. Were you one of the ones who actually kept watch on the door to warn everyone else when the teacher was coming back down the corridor? Or were you well behaved, trying to get on with the work you have been set in spite of the mayhem around you? I shall leave it to your imaginations to work out which one of those children I was. Do you remember how everyone shot back into their seats and silence fell over the room the moment the teacher returned? Everyone with their heads bowed down very conscientiously over their books, no one looking up to meet the eye of the teacher. Still, the teacher knew what had gone on. They knew which children were likely to have misbehaved. They knew who would be the ringleaders, who would be the followers giving in to peer pressure. They knew who would have behaved themselves and quietly got on with their work. The teacher knew who deserved punishment and who should get rewarded. The teacher knew because they knew their pupils, just as Jesus knows each one of us. He knows our current circumstances. He knows our past. He knows our hopes and plans for the future. And he knows what he's got planned for us for the future. Most of all, he knows the motivation and intention of our hearts. He knows exactly what we're getting up to while he's away. Advent is all about preparing for Christ to enter our world. It's about expectant waiting and joyful preparation. Think of getting your home ready for a very special guest. Then apply the same to your life. Get yourself ready to receive Jesus afresh. So much of Advent in our secular calendar is spent buying presents and food and drink and running up credit card bills, which we really can't afford. And I'm sure that this year will be no exception, regardless of COVID. Perhaps there's even more temptation this year with so much shopping being done online. I don't know about you, but when I shop online, it has a certain unreal quality to it. And although I'm hitting buy it now and I'm putting in my credit card details, it doesn't actually feel like I'm really buying anything, which perhaps is a dangerous thing. It's not until it actually lands on your doorstep that you then start to think, did I really buy all of those things online? <laughs> this year, can I offer you three R's to try out for yourself this Advent? Rhythm, reflection and rejoicing. Finding a balanced rhythm in life can be really hard, especially when it's as unusual as it's been this year. Yet it is a well-known fact that having regular times of prayer, meditation, exercise, work, rest and relaxation are essential to our well-being. Jesus himself took time out to keep a rhythm in his life of prayer, of rest, of eating, of drinking, of socialising, of working. 
Now, full disclosure, I am the world's worst when it comes to sticking to a regular rhythm of life. But I know that when I do, I feel better for it and I walk more closely with God. Reflection is the second R and it's an important part of our Christian journey. We look back on what has been, we evaluate and then we look forward with hope. 2020 is a particularly good year to look back on because everything we've taken for granted for so long has been completely turned on its head. What are the lessons we've learned from it? About ourselves, about our world, about God. Finally, the third R, rejoicing. If we get to the 25th of December and we're just completely exhausted and overwhelmed by worrying about whether our loved ones will like the presents we bought them or whether there'll be enough chocolates and mince pies and wine to go around, then we've got Advent wrong. This Christmas, there will be much to rejoice over as people are allowed once again to meet together after so long to join with those they love to celebrate. But let's not forget the reason for the season, as they say. Jesus has come into the world. So let's spend some time over Christmas rejoicing, rejoicing in all that we have, rejoicing in the fact that Jesus has come into the world, rejoicing in the people we are able to spend time with now. Advent is about the past, the present and the future. The past because we commemorate the birth of Jesus, the present because we look at where God is at work in our lives now, and the future, because we look forward to Jesus's return. Whether it's 2021 or 5021, when Jesus comes back, will humanity be ready? If it's in our lifetime, will we? Let's take a moment now to reaffirm our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now Andrew is going to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. On this Advent Sunday, we begin a new year in the life of the church. So Heavenly Father, help us to be alert and watchful. So that we, we may all become the lights in the darkness you have called us to be. Oh God, help us to keep awake and alive to your call. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Loving God, may we actively seek to do good in our world and to stand up for injustice and to work for world peace. 
we ask you to take the false values of our world away and upend them. Take away oppression and set them free. Take the leaders of our world and inspire them. Take the past and redeem it. Take the present and fill it with your love. And take the future and guide us all in it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, this has been another strange week for us all. With its highs and lows, we see a vaccine looming nearer to us, but yet more families mourn the loss of loved ones. God of love and faithfulness, we ask you to, to surround every family in our world. Uphold them in your presence. May the conflicts be healed and the needs be provided for and every act of kindness in our world be blessed. Give us all humility to accept guidance, so lovingly giving, and the courage to uphold one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy and loving God, we bring to you in love those who are weary with ongoing pain and weakness those who are frail with age, and those who are vulnerable. We remember from our own communities, all those who we know and who need our prayers. We bring them all to you this day. And from my own family, I pray at this time for my sister who is undergoing an operation next week. And also some friends of mine whose husbands in hospital. May they feel your loving hand. And we pray for all those who we know personally that need these special prayers. We ask you to pour your loving strength into all their lives and protect them from all that is harmful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We all know the loss of a loved one creates a huge gap that can never be filled. Comfort those in our communities and beyond whose lives now feel empty. Give them strength to carry on. Give their friends and family empathy and understanding and give them and us that we, the trust that we need to trust you. Holy God, we pray for those who have come to the end of their earthly life. Did comfort to all who are bereaved and have been lasting peace to all who are at rest with you now. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy and loving God, your faithful care has brought us safely to this moment. We thank you for your constant love for us, for the forgiveness you give us and for the strength we have to carry on and also for the protection you give us each day. O oh God, keep us awake and alive to your call. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Andy. Now we come to the peace and some special, slightly different words for the peace in honour of Advent. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. 
and also with you. Thank you. I'm now going to just nip over to the uh, computer to start the next hymn, which is a lovely one. It's Longing for Light, We Wait in Darkness. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. 
confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and saying, <coughs> Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread, and drink this cup. We proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of your son set before us in bread and wine. As I now receive these precious sacraments on behalf of all, may the comfort and reconciliation they represent be tangible to all who are watching but unable to receive. Fill each one of us with your Holy Spirit, wherever we are at this moment. Amen.
O Lord our God, make us watchful and keep us faithful as we await the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and with all those you love, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining Andrew and myself this morning. It's been lovely to be with you in your homes again. Uh, next week, we're actually back in church, which is wonderful. So we will go back to the live streaming that we did before. I hope those of you who are unable to come to church will continue to join us at home. Obviously, the time will vary again. I'm, I'm sure that's a little bit difficult to follow. But if you keep an eye on the rotors, then you will know when and where that's happening. And I look forward to seeing you then. Whatever you're doing today, have a very blessed Sunday.